Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Ten years, yes. Ten, for ten years, you did a total of hundreds of uh, individual experiments. They were not all successful. You no. had mixed results, but overall, yes. uh, the results were quite successful in your laboratory. Yes. Over the course of 10 years, we did seven studies that I think would qualify as complete studies, and those all were published, successful or unsuccessful alike, in various journals, parapsychological journals, medical journals, psychiatric journals, psychological journals, and then the pilot studies we made use of also. Mm -hmm. So everything we did is on record, mm -hmm. and people who think that we hid material are absolutely incorrect. Everything is out in the open. Mm -hmm. We put all of that information together years later because I had a hunch that there was something beyond the relationship between the telepathic sender and the telepathic receiver that produced a hit between the target and the dreams. And that was the ambiance, mm -hmm. the environment. Not only the laboratory environment, we made it as pleasant, as enjoyable as possible, took the participant out to dinner, established rapport between the sender and receiver, but the larger environment, and I was curious as to maybe whether sunspots, phase of the moon, had anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And then I read an article by Michael Persinger pointing out that during periods of geomagnetic calm, spontaneous cases from the British Society for Psychical Research files tended to be more prominent. Mm -hmm. So I asked Michael, look, this is the first night that all of our participants participated in an experiment, successful or unsuccessful or partially successful, run these through your mill and see what you find out. And yes, he found out that the nights where there were few sunspots, few electrical storms, the calm geomagnetic nights were significantly filled with more hits mm -hmm. than the nights that uh, were marked by electrical storms and by um, fewer sunspots. And so this indicated that the total environment, the total ambiance has something to do, and I think that this triggered a number of people mm -hmm. to look at their results and see if they could find the same thing, and I think more people should do this. I mean, yeah. after all, we live in a cosmos. What people do is part of a totality, mm -hmm. and who are we to say that the relationship between two people in and of itself, the only thing that produces stuff like telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition. Now, just to be clear, uh, you're saying that increased sunspot activity, meaning solar storms, tends to correlate with a decrease yes. in, in, in your dream telepathy results. Yes. So it, it, it sounds like what you're saying is when there is geomagnetic or electrical noise in the environment that interferes with the ability of the human brain to receive telepathic or clairvoyant imagery. Yes, noise in the environment interferes. We followed this up with a study of the dreams of William Irwin, a psychoanalyst who had more dreams than anybody mm -hmm. else in our laboratory, mm -hmm. and found the same thing with that one person. We also followed this up with the spontaneous cases of precognition, uh, dreams about the future of Alan Vaughan, who was the co-author of Dream Telepathy, yes. found the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we have three strands of evidence from our laboratory indicating that the 
environment has a direct effect, some way or another, on these anomalous dreams. And there are many other studies now have looked at geomagnetic activity and yes. seen similar correlations. Yeah, 